And then. All right, I'm recording. Aaron. Aaron just posted the agenda. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of Contributor Experience for Kubernetes. Uh, my name is Paris. I am the host today. G Rod, unfortunately, is not feeling well. Um, we also have George Castro on the line who's recording for us and as always um, please be respectful and uh, know that this is a record a recorded session so it will be posted on the internet and that is forever. Um, Aaron Quickenberger posted the agenda in the chat and the agenda is also posted in um, the calendar invite. So before we get started, is there any new contributors on the line that would like to introduce themselves? Um, I see, I think Ellen is on the line, but. Hi, I'm, I'm uh, fighting with the app here. <laughs> All good. Uh, well, I'm Ellen. I'm working on uh, KubeCTL with uh, Paris's friends. <laughs> and uh, so here I am. <laughs> Ellen is actually an outreachy uh, intern that we have this semester, and uh, she's been wonderful in helping me with uh, smoothing out the outreachy uh, mentorship program. So definitely props to Ellen. Um, and we'll actually get into updates with that a little later on. Um, next, I wanted to do, which we did last time, which is a really quick stand-up. Um, if you're not on the agenda, um, meaning if you're not giving an update today on the official agenda, and you have something that you'd like to share that you're working on, uh, either wins, losses, or something that you'd like to embark on, speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. So let's go right in. Oh. I, heard I was just going to say uh, stuff that's not on the agenda, but I'm working on updating the generator app in community. Uh, as part of the steering committee, I'm trying to formalize the concept of sub projects. Uh, so the idea is uh, there would be SIGs like SIG apps that have a sub project such as Helm, which is uh, contained entirely within one repo and has its own regularly recurring meeting. Uh, there's also a sub-project idea such as the Workloads API, uh, which currently has Ken Owens as lead. Um, but it's actually sort of spread across a number of uh, subdirectories of one or more repos. And so we need some way to unify the, the code there, uh, but also organize a number of meetings. So I'm also extra incentivized to do this as a SIG testing lead since we just started our own sub-project around the testing comments. Um, and I'm doing a bunch of dev stats in this trivia as well. You are needed, Paris. I am. Thank you. Um, do you need any help from anyone in this crew, or is there anything that we can do to help you? Uh, not at the moment. Um, as far as the sub project thing goes, I'm going to. I have some nits to pick about the general formatting of Sigrid Mies and community that I may try and address first. Uh, and I will certainly run that PR through this group. It's sort of a two-pronged approach where I'm just trying to sort of straw man an implementation that I don't care so much what the subprojects are or who's being voluntold that they have subprojects or whatever. Uh, that's something that I would much rather come from Brian Grant and other members of the steering committee. Uh, but I will definitely make sure it is uh, user-friendly and well understood by this SIG, especially since I'm suggesting that this SIG have two subprojects, but that's later in the agenda. All right, cool. And if there's anybody on the line, too, that can help us take some notes, uh, that would be wonderful. Again, the agenda's in the Zoom chat and the calendar invite. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, looks like, Aaron, you're up first. <laughs> sure. Um, Nominating me as a sig leader. Yeah, so uh, uh, I should just keep going. Uh, I, I hereby propose that we, uh, I'm nominating that Paris become a lead of the sig. Uh, I think she's done a number of efforts through this SIG and has basically become the face of the SIG when I refer people to it. I discussed this in more of a private meeting yesterday with Garrett, who is one of the existing SIG leads. Um, uh, so the, as speaking as a steering committee member, there's not yet any like official sanctioned way to go about doing this. 
I have witnessed this a couple times. I have seen SIG scheduling where they just kind of decided amongst themselves and then emailed the steering committee and said, hey, we're swapping one person for another and we all seemed cool with it, are you cool with it? The steering committee says yes. Uh, in SIG testing, I had somebody uh, reach out to me and they had been doing a bunch of substantive work and so I wanted them to uh, become a SIG lead to sort of uh, take on more of the administrative around managing that project. Uh, we don't personally in SIG testing have a well-documented description of what a SIG lead means and what their responsibilities are, uh, but the idea is it's not just status and privilege. It is actually um, some, some stuff there. Uh, so uh, again, we just kind of, I just brought it up in the meeting and nobody like horribly objected, and so we just did it. Um, so the, the question to this SIG is, do we just want to go ahead and say, yeah, Paris, you're a SIG lead now? Or do yes. we want to like have it written down, whatever? I'm saying right now. Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's publicly recorded, so it's on the record. Hooray, Paris, you're a SIG lead. I feel like a quick note to that mailing list is kind of like a heads up, like a courtesy would be. Correct. So there's, there's definitely some administrative to do as a follow up, which I'm happy to do. Um, I can take that as an action item. Uh, how we go about doing this sort of thing in the future is the sort of thing that, again, speaking as a steering committee member, we would really, really appreciate that this SIG document in some kind of charter. You've seen traffic across the Kubernetes dev and Kubernetes SIG leads mailing lists where uh, uh, Phil and Joe and I think Michelle are, are surveying the SIGs to figure out like, how do you do what you do? What roles do you have? What processes do you follow? This is not in the interest of like mandating that every SIG is run the exact same way because they're all a little bit different. But it's more like we should at least make sure that SIGs have certain things documented and defined, such as how does the SIG make decisions? How does the SIG uh, change its leadership? Blah, 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 blah. So we don't have to have that discussion today. I just wanted enough of a process to get Paris as a SIG. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, number one, everybody, seriously. Um, to the second, really, just to piggyback on the charter uh, keyword that I heard there, um, we there's a Q1 OKR planning link in the agenda that we'll get to probably last, um, but there is a define our SIG charter, and that is a uh, priority. So if folks want to help with that, I'm going to take the shot at the first draft, um, but would love other help and, and collaboration too. So thank you. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next one, which is also Aaron. Um, discuss okay. one of sub project on under the SIG. Yeah. So uh, speaking of sub projects, sub projects are things where it's like there's probably more a core subgroup of people who are interested in this thing and it doesn't necessarily have to involve the entire SIG all the time. I think there are at least two sub projects that fall within the purview of this SIG, just anecdotally. Uh, number one would be mentorship. Um, it's super great and awesome, and Paris has been trying to create sort of an off cycle meeting where uh, this group can talk about just mentorship stuff and not so much automation and tooling stuff. I think that's a great idea. That to me looks and feels an awful lot like a sub project. So I would view that as something that has. Uh, Paris and at least one other person as a dedicated lead. It's got its own meeting. It's got its own agenda. Um, uh, agenda link is asking for permission. If you sign into, I believe, Kubernetes, the Kubernetes dev mailing list, you should have uh, read-only access to it. But I'm going to hand off to George to answer that question more fully. Um, but that would be a great example of community management administrivia. So, um, George and Paris do an excellent job of running and maintaining a variety of infrastructure to help make this project go, including things like Slack and the YouTube channel and Zoom and Google Groups accounts and I don't even know what else. And the idea is, uh, I think a great example would be the um, steering committee election that kind of spontaneously happened back in September of 2017. Uh, was a real burden on their time. And I think it would be fantastic to first um, raise the bus factor on these people from one or two to something higher. Uh, bus factor being if George gets hit by a bus today, I'm not sure if anybody knows how to update the YouTube channel. Uh, so I, I would rather like keep George safe 
but also in the event that George likes to walk by buses a lot, uh, make sure that we are also protected. Uh, so I think that would be another great sub project just to sort of document and define all of the community management administrivia. Um, and I think George seems like a pretty solid lead there. And I also think Paris sounds like a pretty solid lead there since I saw her put out like the Slack admin guide and she's helped run like organizing all of the Kubernetes related meetups is something I would suggest falls under that community management sub project. This is just me spontaneously riffing off the top of my head, but it made sense and sounded good when I was saying it in a smaller meeting, wondering if the larger group agrees. Questions, concerns, comments? Um, in regards, oh, go ahead, I think that was Chris. Yeah, is two people enough or do we need more? So or is I, the idea to get more? I found an issue on this. Part of the thing, I think it kind of goes to one root thing is we don't have like a community at kubernetes.io address, right? Like when Sarah kind of moved on to other things, we changed all her work emails to our work emails. So I was thinking there's gotta be a way that we can have all of these accounts and it includes stuff like the domain names, like all sorts of stuff uh, with a trusted group of people, but like with an alias and we gotta figure an actual way to do it so that, you know, all right, well, next week we actually start our first uh, edition of this meeting, but just for everything minus uh, automation, tooling, uh, testing, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we can definitely save that conversation for next week and go into a deep dive there. Um, I do need a favor from someone, though, on this call. If somebody could update the YAML file for the SIG today with the other meeting time, for so that we you know have it officially on there because right now the sig's only saying uh the sig readme is only saying that we meet once uh bi-weekly i think i will do it i will follow up with you because i have to update that yaml file to make you a sig lead anyway <laughs> All right. Just will, that, uh, uh, will that update the general calendar as well on k yeah. okay yes. yeah right. like it, it changes to that <laughs> should it Update the community thing. And I also I also did post it to K community already. So it is it's manually posted there right now just so we can get the word out. To answer Chris's question about is two enough, my idea is not to say that there should only ever be two people in charge of community management, just to say that there should be two people responsible for the administrative of running a group dedicated to that. But I want there to be more people who are empowered to do the thing. I would imagine that those two people running the community management thing eventually would love to be able to step away and hand it off to a much broader community in much the same way that we have seen the Kubernetes community meeting uh, begun to be led by more people. Um, and, you know, the, the responsibilities have kind of been shared amongst the around and amongst the community by those who are trusted to do it well. Um, and I think that's sort of the goal for running much more of the community than just that one meeting. Especially time zones. If I'm yeah. asleep, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I absolutely cannot stand being a human single point of failure. Like that's, it, it's just, it actually keeps me up at night. <laughs> um, so I think the less that we can, I mean, I think the more that George and I can pull our personal emails out of public record, <laughs> yeah. the better. I mean, trust me, we want to be found, but at the same time, not stalked. <laughs> yeah. let, let me add something real quick. You might have seen me filing a lot of trivial seeming little issues in ContribX, but it's for things that I'm starting to find. Like for example, I don't have access to the Google document for this agenda. We don't really tell people they need to sign up to the developer mailing list first. Yep. So like when I, when you see something like that in the past, I've been like, Oh, it's just one of those things we got to figure out. File a bug, even if like yep. you have no intention of fixing it, but like we need to get them all in a pile so we can start figuring it out. Plus a thousand to filing issues. Yeah. All right. So next is oh face to face discussion. Shadev, you're on, right? Uh, yep. Paris. All right. Um, so you know, um, I've been working with Paris actually on this, right? And we had some discussion uh, in our last uh, our weekly call, bi-weekly call. Uh, and by now, I guess everyone has got the email I sent to the group. Um, if not, please take a look. 
let's just just do me a favor and give a high level just in case somebody wasn't on the call the last time. Yep. You, you want to uh, brief it, uh, Paris, or I can go ahead. And... You can go ahead. Okay. Yep. So I think uh, uh, the discussion was having a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, you know, uh, to speed up with some of the agenda. Uh, we've been talking in this, uh, you know, bi-weekly calls, which will be weekly uh, from next week, seems like. Um, and, you know, we wanted to have a poll. Uh, last week, uh, we had a IHOR uh, or IHOR on the call, and, you know, we talked about having uh, availability of space at uh, Index Conference, which is going to be held in San Francisco next month. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we just wanted to um, sort of have uh, everyone's opinion uh, from this group that if they can meet at the index, seems like, you know, we're getting a free space and, uh, uh, you know, for the full day uh, and, and free registration as well. And, and location seems good for a lot of folks, uh, you know, being in the West Coast. Um, so the email was in that context, uh, you know, I, I worked. Uh, again, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of coordinating these efforts for face-to-face -face meeting, working with Paris. Uh, we do need to work on the agenda for the meeting. You know, one of the things actually George asked in the email uh, uh, mailing list that, you know, we should we should start working on that. Something uh, That's one of the reasons I put it in the agenda that, uh, you know, we need agenda for that face-to-face -face meeting if we decide to meet next month, right? And so far, uh, you know, I have got four plus ones, you know, from Paris, Garrett, uh, George, Ihor, and fifth myself. Um, waiting on uh, other replies. I think Paris, we decided if we, if we got at least, uh, you know, eight to 10 people, uh, mainly the active members of the group, right? If, if we just you know. Does anybody on the call want to, or think they, they can join us or maybe want to, see you know from their company if they can join us that has not responded yet yep that's uh, that would be great if you get in so yeah response. i'm, I'm maybe right now so i'll let you know what i know okay cool i mean the intentions here is just for us to um you know like i said i'll get like he said i'll get together but more most importantly really knock out a lot of uh smaller work that we've been maybe putting off um, but stuff that we know we can get done, for instance, um, Aaron and several other people have been wanting to uh, label the labels and define the labels and uh, essentially put them uh, possibly on the community glossary. Um, but, you know, that's kind of, you know, a, a low, I think a low priority for us. But yeah, we can all get it done if we sit together and crowdsource it for an hour. Um, so activities like that, that would really help the project, um, but we, you know, may not have gotten around to do yet. Um, and then also, of course, planning and things like that. So okay. when are, oh, sorry. Okay. When are we going to make the decision whether it's happening or not? Because it's, it's about a month out. Prices are going to okay. start to get up. I've got dad stuff like, yeah, I think by Friday at the latest. Okay. Um, but I mean, I'd like to make a decision today, but if I think we should do one more call on the mailing list and say, you know, if you could get back to us by Friday, then we can all plan. There's a call going out in the community meeting as well. So. Okay, cool. All right. That's yeah. even better. Tomorrow we're going to mention in community meeting. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, so Paris, uh, real quick on that. So I will follow up with the mailing list a little today, you know, uh, with the Friday deadline. Uh, right uh, to hear back from the folks um and 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 uh for the for the agenda you know to have agenda for the face-to-face -face meeting you know possible face-to-face -face meeting right um should i create like another um, like a google doc and share with the group and yeah, that would be great yep. right? and we can start with the what you just mentioned the label stuff but uh yeah, one of the things I uh, I think would be great for the face-to-face -face meeting is uh you know some of the items in the planning Yep. Uh, we had it, you know, 1.8 time, and then it was pushed into 1.9, and you know, we keep pushing a few things. So uh, those would be the good items to talk. Exactly. All right. So it looks like we have some decisions that um, by Friday we'll make the final call as to whether or not we'll do the face-to-face -face on site uh, at the index conference. And um, again, if you're on the call right now, just let us know via mailing list or Slack channel if you have intentions of coming so we can include you.
All right. So um, next on the agenda is me with a mentoring update. Um, good news is that all of the ideas that we've had set forward are now in incubation phase. Um, those are uh, group mentoring, uh, meet the contributors, and uh, actually for Outreachy and now Google Summer of Code. Um, those are all tiered into uh, different learning styles and audiences. So group mentoring is more of our long-term contributor ladder strategy uh, where we take groups of people who are currently one rung of the ladder into a another. Um, so for instance, the incubation right now is current members going to uh, reviewer owner's files. Um, and then the short-term kind of learning on demand, I just need to talk to a human contributor, uh, is geared, that is meet our contributors. It's very similar to user office hours with the exception of contributor questions. Um, we're also going to be trying out uh, a like 30 minute peer code review session, which I'm super excited about. And Ellen on the call has actually been helping me with like how we can actually get the logistics done for that. Um, so I think the, a peer code review session would be really cool and we'll see how it goes. I mean, it could, um, you know, not go well or it could go awesome. So our first time is February 7th and the doc, I checked that doc into the mentoring folder on the community repo. I'm not sure if it's officially merged yet, I'll, but I'll uh, go ahead and link that in the agenda doc in a second. Um, oh, I had a plus one from Gwen. Sweet. Yep. So yeah, if anybody here is interested in like that kind of meet our contributors and wants to help out as a contributor, um, I also created a sign up form to very similar to George's user office hours. Uh, and that will also be in the doc that we've checked in. So if you want to sign up for either the peer review component or the uh, I'm a contributor and I'm here to answer your questions, uh, would love to have you. We're full for the first one on February 7th. Nikita is actually doing the peer review, um, the peer review piece. Um, but ideally, it would be cool if we could do this as a... Uh, a bi-weekly session. Um, right now I've got it down as a monthly session. Um, but if we do want to continue like short-term learning, I think it would be best if we had it as frequently as possible. Um, and then the other two that I mentioned are geared towards students so uh, or untraditional students. So it's Outreachy, which is a program that it's a third-party program, outreachy.org. Uh, that pays uh, underrepresented folks a stipend to work on open source projects. Other projects like Debian and uh, and some other uh, Linux flavors have uh, have outreachy interns as well. Uh, and it's a a, a long term three plus month program that uh, that we participate in. And then Google Summer of Code, Nikita, who actually came through Google Summer of Code uh, last year for us, is going to be now running it this year, uh, and I'll uh, help her where needed. Um, but that's what we have for mentoring right now. I'm actually setting a humongous mentoring uh, umbrella issue today so that everybody can see where they can plug in and help because I need tons and tons of help with this. Um, so if you're interested, you'll see the umbrella issue today. Um, mostly the, the work that needs to be done is around curriculum creation for group mentoring. So ideally we'll have six workshops uh, per every group mentoring session, and those six workshops would represent uh, skills that you know each type of individual needs. So, for instance, what's the skills needed to be a member? What's the skills needed to be a successful reviewer? What's the skills that we're missing with uh, current approvers uh, and things like that? And then we target. Uh, the long-term strategy there is these workshops and the materials that we would create would ultimately create Kubernetes learning and development. Um, so that's the, the kind of like long-term goal that I, I envision here. Um, very similar to like kind of an OpenStack upstream institute. Oh no, my light just went off. Ah, and that's it for me. So, uh, oh. questions? Was someone going? Uh, I, mm -hmm. I can go. Hey, um, as far as staffing the, especially the peer code reviews, you said that was full. How's that been going so far? 
Um, I mean, only, only full for the first session that we're doing. Okay. So, yeah, we only have Nikita right now. Okay. Um, so she stepped up and, and decided to do it. But okay. if you do this biweekly, then we'll ideally need at least two people. Um, okay, so, so, so yeah. should we perhaps mention, like, are you announcing this at all in the yep. community meeting? Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. I wanted to check. I wanted to check the umbrella issue in, um, so that we could actually point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We could actually yeah. point to uh, its legitimacy instead of my hot air. <laughs> um, mm. We're gonna ask for the details of this. That's it's getting checked in today. I had a knit, and I don't know if it got merged yet. Um, and I don't want to mess with my computer right now because with Zoom I might freeze. So. Um, I will send that out to the, not only the Slack channel, but for contributor experience, but I'll probably send it out to Kubernetes dev and several other mailing lists. So hold tight. Um, do we, yeah, I mean, basically just, oops, I'm frozen. Um, just asking for details on this. Um, what is the peer review entail? Um, what does it mean? Does it mean that the uh, new contributors are reviewing for each other or? Um, not necessarily new contributors. I feel like be a experienced contributor who would take a problem and the problems would be submitted through either our meet our contributors channel or, you know, some other way that we can finesse. Um, right now in the, in the guide that I wrote, I said, you know, submit your problems that you would like peer reviewed uh, 24 hours before our meeting. And then what Nikita is going to do for the first one is go through the stuff that is that people have linked and then address the, uh, address the ones that she knows that she has the skills for and like the expertise to speak on and also take into consideration time um, because we'll only assign like 20 to 30 minutes to the peer review part. So it would have to be, you know, probably something that's like size medium or, or, or smaller that we can get through. Um, but this is just to get everybody talking and uh, learning together uh, in kind of like a, like, a, you know, a peer setting. So I see, I see. So encourage everyone to review as well as contribute. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. And really just set the tone for code reviewing the Kubernetes way. Um, and actually, George, let me, hold on, hopefully I don't freeze here. Um, but George actually set an issue recently on, this very, on that very same topic of how we don't have any documentation that's geared towards, um, and you, you were on that issue as well, uh, we don't have any documentation geared towards like how to be a code reviewer the Kubernetes way. Um, we have like how to do faster, you know, how to get code reviewed faster and things like that. So um, in that issue, I did start a doc of uh, all of the docs that we have and external docs that would relate to, you know, code reviews the Kubernetes way. So if anybody on the call is interested in that, um, collaboration is in there. And I'll go ahead and like I said, I'll put the issue uh, in the agenda today as well. Yeah, I, uh, thank you for the context. Um, yeah. I I, of course. I think it's great. My org does not have a doc like that, and it would be amazing. Yeah. All right. That's it for me. And the mentoring update next is George with the contributor guide update. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Can you all see that? Yeah. Um, so I went ahead and added this to Guinevere's umbrella issue for the contributor guide. So what this is is all of our existing developer documentation in the devil directory, I created, I just did an LS and basically created a checkbox for it, for it because there's stuff in there that we're going to want in the contributor guide and stuff that's like not appropriate and some stuff is duplicated. For example, CollabMD had the same stuff that was in another document. So I marked it down as, hey, when we're all done with this, let's go back and probably delete this one. Um, at first, Gwen, you know how we talked about when we move something to the contributor guy, we should delete it from here. In hindsight, yeah. that, that's probably a bad idea. So Joe was thinking you guys should just mark the document as deprecated at the top, point to the new one, and then kind of give people a warning that this document could delete at any time. That way it'll, for people that don't sit in on this meeting or something, they might, you know, it'll give them a heads up. Um, so basically my plan is from now on is to just basically scrub each one of these documents as part of this and then do a pull request. I, um, I've already marked the ones that have 
that have been done. Um, so mostly that's, that's all I really uh, wanted to share. Um, if you haven't known by now before I was saying I was going to do a bunch of good trip stuff and I never got around to it. So I'm actually scheduling time now. Um, so I highly recommend if, if you're like, Hey, I'm going to do that at some point, And then you find yourself two cycles later, not completing it, putting it on your actual calendar. So no one bothers you. And then actually saying I have dedicated time for this has been really useful for me. I know that's like engineering 101 and I just suck at it, but, um, yeah, uh, progress is going good. Thank you so much to everyone who's been reviewing uh, all my pull requests. And that's all I have for that. Oh, I have the next one. Uh, I also did a pull request to move all the community meeting um, information. So the community doc has like too much stuff in the front and it like sucks trying to get down. So I was like, well, a lot of this stuff isn't changing. It should be codified. It should be reviewed. So I've, I've got a pull request and I'll go back and link it in. So thanks for reviews for that. Um, and as far as getting things clean and then in the working Google doc, we'll just put a link to the GitHub so that you don't have to read everything every single time you go into the doc. And that's also part of the debusifying things uh, initiative. And that's all I have. Thank you. And George, for the contributor guide piece, how can, what's the best way for folks to jump in and help you with that working list? Yeah, so usually what people have been doing is in a checkbox, if you scroll up, some, sometimes people put their name, you know, hey, I got this or whatever. I'm kind of, so it feels like the file review, reviewing each file. I feel like I'm the only person doing that right now and I'm going top to bottom. So if you want to help with this, I'll just ask you to go bottom to top and then we'll like meet in the middle. If we get more people, we can assign them or what I didn't. I didn't want to file like 75 bugs, one for each file because that was like too much process I feel so if you're interested in, in working on this file scrub because we're gonna have to do it twice I found myself rewriting something and then realizing when I got to the next document that if I refer to the old one it's not gonna look right so I feel like we're gonna scrub through once then go back and fix the context for a lot of them that now don't make sense uh, because at some point we want the whole thing to read like it's written by a common person right now they all have different voices different styles but I'm mostly just like, there's so much old stuff in there that I'm just mostly like cutting out. Like a lot of them have a separate copy of the COC at the top, right? So like just cutting that out and linking to the, to the canonical one is like first step. Then we go back and, you know, figure out, does this read like a book instead of 50 files that are shoved in a directory? And I feel like don't necessarily worry about tone right now either because yeah. you can always, yeah, you can always have docs scrub that uh, and give it a, a final edit. So yeah, yeah if, if anybody on here is worried about their writing or yeah. you know tone or anything like that, I wouldn't necessarily worry about that. Just get the meat and potatoes done and, and those, those boxes checked off so George can ship it off to the tech writers. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. All right. So next topic is, um, do we want an intro and deep dive for KubeCon EU? I'm pretty sure everybody on this call is going to say yes. Is there anyone that says no? Anyone that disagrees with us having a intro session and deep dive for KubeCon Copenhagen? This would be a 30 minute intro session, which is kind of what we owe to the community about what we've been working on. Uh, and then the deep dive is um, pretty much similar to what we're trying to achieve at the face-to-face -face at the index conference where we uh, engage the community and do more of a working session for about 90 minutes and get some stuff done. Any, any nays? All right. No nays, it's just the reason I put that on the agenda was while I'd like it. I don't know if I would personally have the bandwidth to offer either of those sessions. And the form allows us to sign up for just one or the other or both. If yep. you care, I think you got the bandwidth for both. I'm all in favor of it. Yeah, I think I do. I think George, I think George might, or at least, yeah. yeah, I think, I think a couple of Tim between, I think between everybody on this call right now, we're going to have at least both of those covered, if not more. So. Uh, yeah. One thing we should probably get a work item out of this is who's filing this because it's like a form that we have to fill out to formally ask for a slot. That was the ask. The form yeah. needs you to put in your name as the presenter and somebody else's name as a co-presenter. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll do it today. Okay. Hold on, let me actually write that down so I remember. <laughs> 
All right. Now the meat and potatoes of today's call is Q1 OKR planning. Uh, links in the doc. I'm gonna put it in the chat too, just in case folks don't have that. Oh, you know what too? Dang it, I think, that, you know what? I'm gonna have to switch the sharing settings because I think I created this with my Google account. Dang it. Um, hold on, let me see. You and it's, your fancy light bulbs. I know. <laughs> Whoever, um, I just put the link in the chat. I'll go ahead and accept you. I accidentally created this from my Google account instead of my Gmail account, which has limited share privileges. I just invited Kubernetes staff with common privileges. Okay, cool. All right. Notify them. It may have. Oops. Okay. Tim Thanks. got in. Okay. Okay. Looks like peep, some peeps are getting in. So that's good. All right. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five objectives. All of these are not going to be Q1 despite the title. Um, so that's kind of what we need to discuss as far as what we should be pushing forward for Q1. What's priority? Um, if you have an objective that is not on here, let's talk about it now. Um, but let's briefly go through the objectives and then we can do deep dives. We only have about, like, say, less than 20 minutes on this. So let's. Hey, uh, Parish, real quick, can you explain yeah. everyone what an OKR is and why? Oh, we're yeah, doing this? for sure. Yeah. So uh, OKRs uh, stand for objectives and key results. Um, and the objectives should be uh, something not necessarily broad, but something a little bit more high level. And then um, our key results are the uh, actions and, and the results from what we're trying to achieve. Um, so for, for instance, the first objective that we have down is create programs that encourage the growth of all contributor ladder levels. Um, and then ideally, uh, anything that we're doing that would be like training, mentoring, et cetera, would be kind of falling under this, uh, this objective. So um, first things first, does anyone see any objectives on here that are, or does anybody have objectives that we, that they think should be on here either for Q1 or this year that is not on here? I'd like to start there first. All right. That's it. Sounds like a no. All right. So is there any objective on here that folks think need to be addressed? So let's talk about Q1 priority. So I'll just go ahead and read for those that can't uh, join into the, um, the spreadsheet. So again, objective one, create programs that encourage growth of all contributor ladder levels. Objective two, the Kubernetes contributor experience is well documented and continuously improving. Uh, three, make dev stats work for us and come up with metrics that measure health and velocity. Uh, next, provide sufficient automation that direct write access to repos is no longer required. And then also the growth and promotion of contributor experience, SIG. So in each one of those, there are some key results in areas. Um, Anyone th want to discuss what they believe should be our pri our absolute first priority? I'll start. Oh, do not! I, I was raising my hand. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, just um, jump in. I'm sorry. Don't raise. Yeah, from from the stuff that's missing, I'm kind of looking in Aaron's direction here. As yeah. far as doing things like the reorging of the repo and and like assigning code to SIGs and all that stuff. How much of that do we have to worry about? Can you help? Uh, all right. Can you rephrase the question so I don't just say yes to that thing? Said? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, all right. So you know how SIGs are going to be like owning code and things like that, right? Right. Like, how much is that the SIGs are like, what are the they go in a battle royale and fight it out. I don't like is is like part of this SIG's responsibility to kind of help figure that out or do this no, figure that I out? I don't I guess my thing is I'm not sure that I see that on this document as an objective for this SIG. What I want this SIG to do is decide what 
what do you um right what do you think you okay all right that? so we're only thinking about our yeah i was just wondering because we know that org reorg is coming and i was wondering if that should be like on our radar for this year no no it's not it, i wouldn't so much view it as a reorg just that it's more like an ask to every sig okay we, please come up with a charter that states what you own and some of the bare bones of the processes. Okay. And for the hot potatoes that are left over that nobody is willing to own, we are going to have to find an owner. Okay, got it. Got it. George, George is Matt. Just real quick, I think okay. it's lovely that you thought SIGs were going to fight over who owns code. I, I think the harder problem is going to be finding SIGs to own code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think positively. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it's it's much more an, it, more of an interest in having six claim ownership of their code rather than being voluntold. Yeah, so I think that kind of now that that answers the question, I feel like our number one thing we need to do right away is sort out our SIG charter, what we're responsible for, what we're not. It should also say what we're not responsible. I feel so that like people don't assume that we own things that we don't, I guess, and just kind of make it really scoped. Yeah, what I, what I have seen other SIGs do is do like a, a goals and non-goals section as part of their charter. Okay. I definitely think the charter should be uh, near, like I think we should have something of a first draft, whether it's even an outline by the next meeting. Um, yep. yep. So we'll definitely have that as a goal. So if, if you're interested in, in chartering, chartering it up, <laughs> um, let's talk about it in the Slack channel over the next week or so. Yeah, and when you share the doc, just share it with the SIG. Yes, for I, sure. I, something I'd like to fix, with, like sometimes I start documents that is meant for this SIG and then I'll share it with only one or two of you. And then like I wanna get in the habit of sharing it with the mailing list so that like yeah. it gets Same. people other than the slackers. Yeah, same plus one. That's I mean yeah. that's pretty much what I did. I was only we were I was only sharing this between like three three folks to yeah. get some buy in, and and here we are now. I can't share it with the group, so I yeah. I, need, I need to get into a better habit of doing almost everything with my Gmail account. I agree. All right, so we've got. It sounds like priority is definitely charters or anything else that folks uh, can pick from here, pick out of here that we should be working on like immediately. All right. Is there any objections to any of these OKRs? Uh, just question, uh, Paris. Yeah. I think you did mention that I give a right access for this talk. To you. Yep. Yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then there are a lot of holes as far as owners are concerned uh, for some of these KRs. For instance, um, there's some holes with dev stats. Um, there are some holes with just, it looks like people needing help. Um, so please feel free to jump into the owner's, uh, owner's column uh, and write your name down if you want to help out uh, with any of these OKRs. All right. So, yeah, I would, I, th so this is me not being used to, to KRs, but I think some of these are still a little squishy too. I, I think of them in the context of SMART goals and don't ask me to say what SMART stands for other than measurable. Yes, and I can, yeah, we definitely need some help too with the KRs as well. So I mean, the, and again, this is first draft shot. Um, so a lot of these KRs are currently, at, you know, in its current state are not really measurable as stated. So if you feel like, you know, kicking back and forth with us, it's like, hey, how are we going to measure this? Please feel free. Uh, we definitely need that kind of dialogue. I mean, for instance, how, like, I'm just going to take, take a KR here. Um, like, how do we know we were successful um, when we put together a contributor guide? Like, what's our, what's our measure of success that the contributor guide that we put together is working? Mm -hmm. Well, there is a contributor guide could could be the start. I, I'm looking at things like Slack admin and moderation. How do you? What, yeah. What's, what's the measurement there? Or yeah. smooth out weekly community meeting. Yeah. 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 I kind of just wrote those in there and like <laughs> have, haven't 
normalized it to like we would do something like a six shouldn't wait more than 24 hours to get a resource or yeah. exactly yep and uh, creating slas yeah all of this definitely needs to be tackled in this doc so um any comments that folks have please feel free to add um the collaboration here yeah I and she also with, oh sorry sorry go ahead george no you go first I was going to say, I think some of the objectives are a bit broad, and as you you get into, or we as we get into trying to define how we would measure them, we may need to refine the scope a little bit. Just thinking about creating the programs that encourage growth at all contributor ladder levels. I mean, I totally like the aspiration of that, but given resources, it may make sense to initially start focusing on a few per, a few of the levels, or or simplifying the levels, the ladder, and it. It's, it's something that would be measurable across all of them, but it also might spread the team very, very thin trying to to reach out and do all of them in parallel. So I, I agree with that. Like it, this is too much for Q1. However, I'm looking at this document through the lens of objectives or like our North Star for 2018, not necessarily discrete things that we are going to accomplish within Q1. I look at the KRs as things that are discrete things that we accomplish. I think there are too many of them for Q1, but I think the idea here is with explicit prioritization, we're kind of calling out what things we think we should and are capable of achieving by Q1, and then how we can order and shuffle the rest around. All right, so that makes sense. I'm a big fan of a backlog, and being completely yep. open on brainstorming up front makes it much easier to do a meaningful prioritization for the short term. Yeah, plus it helps new people figure out what to do, right? It's like grab one of these. And let's make it uh, let's make it a goal for next meeting to um, have the priorities in. Mm -hmm. So then next meeting we'll know what priority is and what we can what we're going to push off to Q two Q three uh, mm -hmm. from that from that perspective. So when we say Q one, we mean March thirty first, right? Like two months worth of work. Correct. We also do need to discuss, like, we also do need to really hone in on what we can deliver for 1.0. So, you know, we can try to um, get some, get some buzz around, you know, stuff that contributor experience has done um, when they roll out 1.0, 110, I'm sorry, geez. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to try to do quarterly goals then. It's not tied to like the release schedule. I mean, I think some of I think some of these can be can be like cherry picked for releases. Sure, sure. Uh, but I think overall we should probably stick to quarterly. Yeah, because it feels like a lot of it can be done independently of what Kubernetes release schedule is, right? Yeah, correct, correct, exactly. Okay. I mean, some of like the automation tooling and and stuff like that that Aaron yeah. and folks are working on might want to be tied to releases, but um, I mean for the qualitative. Um, things that may not be, you know, more human related than, um, than yeah, quarterly. All right. So we have 10, a uh, less, little less than 10 minutes left. Um, questions, concerns, comments about the OKRs. Also, one thing is, um, we should definitely put these on GitHub. Um, we should definitely put our project planning on GitHub as well with uh, contact names and how to reach out and um, how to plug people in. And this will actually, I feel like, make our SIG uh, easier for new contributors to jump in and, and help us. So um, that's goal here as well, is to not keep this document inside of a spreadsheet and, and on a mailing list, but also to put on GitHub and, and to be completely open. I, I apologize for asking this because I know it will lead to bike shedding, but do we want to use like any of GitHub's like project management board features or anything? Um, it's up to y'all. And then someone's going to say, I, I prefer Trello, and then we'll argue for like two hours. <laughs> Something is better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm on the I'm on the Chris Short method. <laughs> yeah, because I think you can take yeah. GitHub issues within our section and then maybe crib out like a little project board, little left to right action maybe. Yeah, like my biggest problem with all of this is like finding everything. Like, exactly. Go do that. So exactly. Anything that I like, what I'm looking for would be awesome. Like we yeah. could default to like that being our, our thing. Aaron's also being suspiciously silent on tooling. 
<laughs> I hate GitHub projects with a passion. But yeah, that's like it, it's not it's not awesome, but like I feel like. Why do you hate it with a passion? I, I, I like, so like are you so passionate us, you would never use it? Or? If it inconveniences us, but makes us more transparent and lets. I don't know. Gives people a place to. I, 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 I kind of operate more by like GitHub queries, so I think oh. uh, issues that are consistently labeled with state contributor experience are what I use to understand what the state's workload are is it doesn't necessarily help with prioritization. I totally get that, and the reason I'm being quiet is because it's y'all say yet you do what you want. <laughs> like I have a couple it's tasks that I'm gonna thing. do. And if I don't remember to add them to the project board and then shuffle them around because I'm too used to just working with raw issues, I, I apologize and you can totally like come slap yeah. me on however many risks you need to. Yeah, and I'm more thinking of people that aren't in this call, right? Like if we wanted yeah. to, if we had new people, how do they? Yes. But like, I think just uh, plug for the fact that I, though I'm not, part of the reason I'm not gonna have bandwidth for a contributor experience deep dive is because I'm trying to do a dev stats deep dive. Dev stats and operates entirely through uh, GitHub label uh, queries. So the, the better labeling hygiene, the better for dev stats anyway. And now he doesn't want any responsibility. <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out of here. So you guys are talking about the bots, I'm out of here. All right, so we only have a couple minutes left to wrap up. Does anybody have anything that's not related to OKRs that they want to share after 40 plus minutes of this meeting? I am attempting to delegate work, Matt Farina. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cannot wait to assign code to Matt Farina. <laughs> Yeah, Matt Farina, Matt Farina is on the line and would like work apparently. <laughs> so if anybody would like to delegate work to Matt. <laughs> wait, right. wait, I got to drop. See you later. I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with my microphone? All right. Well, let's, let's wrap the call today. And right. I'll see everybody next Wednesday for uh, a meeting on any, everything and anything that's not dev stats, GitHub, or tooling. Cool. All right. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Talk to you soon.